Welcome back to Response EDH. As always, I'm your host, Albert, and I'm glad you can join us for another great Commander gameplay video. On today's episode, we have Ellie returning, and she's playing everyone's favorite band commander, Chulain, Teller of Tales. She's trying to make a ton of tokens from landfall creatures like Avenger of Zendikar, and play tons of extra lands with Chulain and cards like Azusa. Then once she's amassed a huge board, finish the game in one swing with the Crater Hoof Behemoth. Next we have Daniel back, and he's brought with him Cedri. Galvanic Genius. This deck wants to cheat in a ton of artifacts, and with Biotransference, that's every creature in his deck. He also runs Caltrops, which becomes a one-sided board wipe when he activates his commander's abilities, and maybe even melt Urza Planeswalker for some extra control. Up next we have Joseph, and today he's brought his new Voltron deck, led by the partners Rogrok and Keleth. This is a straight-up Voltron equipment deck that suits up Rogrok with some heavy hitters like Embercleave and Sword of Feast and Famine, and equipment like Trailblazer's Boots to make it unblockable. And of course, there's me. I'll be playing my daughter's newest deck, Brea, Ethereum Shaper. I built it for her, so of course we had to add some extra turns in there, so there's Time Sieve to sack a ton of artifacts and take an extra turn. I also added Ashnod the Uncaring to be able to double its triggers to take two turns instead. She's not a combo player, but now she's forced to be, since I put in Bolas' Citadel, Sensei's Top, and Aether Flux Reservoir to close out the game. Before we get started, we would like to remind you, if you enjoy our content and would like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. When you do, you're not only contributing to the channel's growth, but you're also being entered in our monthly giveaways, as well as receiving patron-only perks. All proceeds of our Patreon are reinvested back into the channel to bring you the best content possible. We would also like to thank our sponsor, Dragon Shield. Hit the link in the description of this video to check out the best product out there to protect your cardboard. You can also support the channel by using our affiliate link when purchasing product and singles at TCG Player. With that said, and the introductions out of the way, let's start the game. Daniel wins a die roll and starts us off, playing a Marsh Flats and cracking it to search up a tapped, hallowed fountain. Joseph then draws. Um, what? I'm gonna cast Rogue Rock before I play a land. <laughs> <laughs> what? Zero cost Broken. commanders. Broken. Oh. He then plays a mountain and passes. I then start my turn playing a tapped arcane sanctum and pass. Ellie then draws and plays a broker's hideout. She then sacks it, gains a life, and finds a forest to the battlefield tapped. Daniel starts his next turn just playing a tapped godless shrine and passes. Joseph plays a plains and then casts his other commander, Keleth, sun main familiar. He then goes to combat and swings at me, triggering Keleth and putting a counter on Rogrok. I draw for turn and play a totally legit volcanic island, and then cast an Icker Wellspring, drawing a card as it enters. Ellie then draws for turn and decides to just play a tapped hallowed fountain and passes. Daniel then plays a tainted field and then taps out to cast Dark Steel Ingot and passes. Joseph then draws and plays another mountain. He then taps two for an Arcane Signet and another two to cast Mask of Avacyn. After that, he goes to combat. Not it. Oh, you're going to take the road rock. <laughs> two at you and then two at you, Daniel. Kellis will trigger and each of his commanders get a plus one, plus one counter. I drop a turn and play a swamp as my land drop and tap out to cast a commander sphere. Ellie draws and plays a field of ruin. Because you're such a terrible host, I want to tap two oh my goodness. and field of ruin your sanctum. Oh, wow. I'm going to blow up your sanctum. Everybody gets to search their library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield. <laughs> I'm a basic bitch. After that, she ends her turn. Daniel starts his turn playing a basic swamp. He then taps out to cast Anric here, the Traveler. With nothing else, he ends his turn. Joseph draws for turn and plays a Rogue's Passage as his land drop. He then taps all his mana to cast Ugin the Ineffable. He decides to take up the Ugin, tags out the top card of his library, and make a 2-2 colorless spirit. After that, he ends his turn. I then drop a tapped Hallowed Fountain on the field. I follow that up by tapping two mana to cast a Demir Signet and pass. Ellie then draws and plays Minamo, School at Water's Edge, as her land for turn, and passes. Daniel then untaps and draws. He goes straight to combat and swings at me. 
I then realize I didn't take my rogue rock damage, and then take another 4 from Anrakir. It then triggers, and Daniel pays 4 life to cast Crypto Thrall. After that, he casts a Combat Thresher for its prototype cost, and as it enters, it draws him a card. He follows that up by casting a Sword of the Meek, and then drops an Arcane Sanctum as his land for turn. With nothing else, he passes. Joseph then starts his turn, upticking Ugin again, and exiles the top card of his library face down and making another 2-2 Spirit. He then plays a Ring of Colonia for free, thanks to Ugin's static ability. He then taps one to cast an Honored Heirloom. He then pays another one to cast Sword of Feast and Famine, followed by another one for Sword of Body and Mind. After that, he pays to equip Sword of Feast and Famine and goes to combat. This triggers the Keleth again, giving Rogrok another counter and hitting me for five more commander damage. I then discard another land since I'm flooded, and Joseph untaps his lands. He then pays 3 to equip the Mask of Avacyn to Rogrok, giving it Hexproof and another buff. He then pays another 2 to equip it with the Sword of Body and Mind. Don't trip. Uh, you're <clears throat> going to hate my next turn. No, God. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have hit me, man. Uh, play a land. Hey, I gave you one turn. Uh, I then tap my Commander Sphere for mana to activate my Demir Signet for a blue and black. I then sacrifice my sphere to draw a card. After that, I tap another 4 for Austere Command, choosing to destroy all artifacts and creatures CMC 3 or less. My Ichor Wellspring will also go to the graveyard, and when it does, I draw a card. The whole board then gets wiped, and I pass the turn. Ellie then starts her turn and plays a Tundra. Tap 3, is Zeus a lost but seeking? I can play two additional lands, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to play a Gaia's Cradle, I'm going to play an Engaijo Seed of the Empire. With nothing else, Ellie just passes. Daniel starts his turn, casting a Hell Vault. He then just decides to leave some mana open and pass to Joseph. Joseph draws and finds a Mana Crypt and casts it. He then taps the reduced cost of 4 mana to cast a Steel Hell Kite. But Ellie decides to respond and mana drains it. This will give her 6 colorless mana on her next main phase. Joseph then takes up Ugin, again despite my suggestion to get rid of Azusa. He then taps 2 to cast a Humble Defector. And with nothing else, ends his turn. I untap and draw. I then drop a Reliquary Tower on the field as my land for turn. After that, I cast a Duretti Scrap Savant, but Daniel seems to have a problem with it and casts Urza's Rebuff to counter it. Ellie draws and uses two of her floating colorless mana to help cast Chulain, Teller of Tales. Ellie then plays an island and uses the rest of her colorless mana to help cast a fairy, Temporal Pilgrim. She then decides to use the zero ability to draw a card, and when she does, Teferi gets a loyalty counter. After that, she passes back to Daniel. Daniel then draws and just plays a command tower, and says go. Joseph starts his turn, rolling for the mana crypt, and takes three damage. He then casts a Zephyr Boots for free. After that, he ticks down Ugin to destroy Ellie's Teferi. He then activates the Humble Defector to draw two cards, and chooses to give the Defector to Daniel. He then casts Ring of Valkus for free. After that, he taps two mana to recast Grogrok. He then taps one to equip his commander with the ring. Next, he taps the rest of his mana to recast Keleth. He then goes to combat, triggering Keleth's ability and putting a counter on Rogrok. Joseph again swings at me, and I take another commander damage. I untap and draw, and at least keep hitting my land drops. I then tap four to cast my commander. We'll cast Brea. Uh, make some. I don't think she did. It's not. Could you spell right? No. Target. Oh, oh target. Non creature. Wow, that right. was mean. Did you guys see that, chat? Oh my god. I <laughs> told you. Holy shit. Who my target was. <laughs> Jeez. You have to knock out Albert first. I then make two Thopters and pass. But on Ellie's upkeep, I pay two to sack my Thopters to give Chulain minus four minus four and get it off the table. Ellie starts her turn by casting Sarath, the Viper's Fang. Well, because of that, Albert, unfortunately this is going to target all of you, but Tasha's hideous laughter. Okay. Blame Albert for this. Right. So, all of you exile cards maxed 20 CMC Ooh, or more. Six. Oh man, I have slow CMCs in here. Nine. Blame Albert for this. Three. Joseph. Twelve. You were going to do it anyways. 
We then exile a bunch of cards, and Daniel retaliates by activating the Hell Vault to exile the Serith. Daniel then draws for turn, and then activates the Humble Defector to draw two more cards. He then gives it right back to Joseph. After that, he plays a tapped Tomb Fortress as his land drop. He then casts Drafna, Founder of Latinum. Next he taps Esper Colors to cast his commander, Cedri, Galvanic Genius. With nothing else, he passes to Joseph. Joseph starts his turn, once again losing the Mana Crypt roll and another 3 life. Joseph then activates the Defector and just passes it back to Daniel and draws 2 cards. He then casts a free Mask of Memory. Next he pays 2 mana to cast a Cathartic Reunion, discarding 2 cards and drawing 3. He then plays a land for turn. After that, he takes down Ugin again to destroy Drafna. In response, Daniel activates it to bounce the Hell Vault back to his hand, exiling Ellie's creature forever. Joseph then equips Rograk with the Mask of Memory. He then pays 2 mana to equip the Zephyr Boots as well. After that, he moves to combat, triggering the ring, forgetting that it was an upkeep trigger and not a combat trigger. It gets another counter from this, and then gets another counter from the Keleth trigger. He then swings at me for another 3 commander damage. This will trigger the Mask of Memory to draw 2 and pitch 1. The Boots will also trigger to draw a card and discard. He then casts a free Cloak of the Bat, and continues suiting up Rograk with everything under the sun. I draw for turn and decide we need to try to get to the Ugin, so I attack it and Joseph blocks with the Spirit. On my second main, I cast the Angel of Ruins. As it enters, I choose to exile the Mask of Memory and the Ring of Valkus. I then end my turn. Ellie draws for turn and casts an Augur of Autumn, which lets her play lands from the top of her library. She finds an Azorius Chancery and plays it as her first land for the turn, bouncing an island back to her hand. She then finds a Simic Growth Chamber on top and plays it, bouncing a forest back to her hand. She then plays that forest as her third land drop and passes. Daniel draws for turn and taps the Defector again to draw another two and passes it back to Joseph. He then pays five mana to activate the Tomb Fortress to mill the top four of his library, those being Biotransference, Chromatic Lantern, Dread Return, and a Nurse's Command. He then chooses to return Enrikir back to the battlefield. Next he plays Ramishra's Bauble, and then recasts the Hell Vault. After that, he plays a Westfell Abbey as his land for turn, and passes. Joseph rolls for the Mana Crypt, and this time avoids taking damage. He then draws for turn, and takes up Ugin to exile the top card again, and makes another Spirit. After that, Joseph plays an Urza Saga as his land drop. Next he casts a Thrill of Possibility, Discarding a card and drawing two. Alright, I gave it to Daniel last time. Okay, you did the Yay, thank you. Joseph draws two more cards and then casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Brass's bounty. After that, he casts Iroas, God of Victory. He then pays one to cast a Haunted Cloak. Joseph's not done drawing cards though, as he cycles away a Forgotten Cave to draw another. Next, he pays one to equip the Haunted Cloak. Uh, triggering Keleth, he'll get a counter. Alright. I'll save you mercy this turn. Oh, thanks. Now swing for uh, Ellie. Ellie then takes four commander damage, and Joseph draws a card and discards thanks to the boots. I then start my turn and hit my land drop again. I then crack the fetch, taking a life, and searching up a plateau. I then move to combat, swinging my flyer at Ugin. Joseph just lets it go through, and Ugin finally goes down. After that, I cast Urza, Chief Artificer. I then go to my end step and make a construct with Urza. Ellie then starts her turn, recasting Chulane. She then pays two life to cast Noxious Revival to put her mana drain back on top of her library. The Humble Defector to draw two cards. Mm. I'm going to give this back to you. Nice. It's not going to go to Albert. I'm going to draw this and this. She then looks at the top of her library and finds a forest, which she plays as her land drop. She looks again, but then just passes back to Daniel. Daniel starts turn 10, 
drawing his card and moving straight to his combat phase. He swings Anrakir at Ellie, triggering it and paying 9 life to cast Depth Charge Colossus. I will take that 9 mana. Yeah, you will. Mana drain. <laughs> this is my big play. <laughs> so pay 9 life to give her 9 mana. Seems good. Ellie doesn't block or take damage, but whatever. Daniel then sacrifices the bobble to look at the top of Ellie's library and doesn't like what he sees. Before he ends his turn, Ellie casts Cross and Grip to destroy the Hellvolt. Joseph then starts his turn by taking up the Urza Saga and then rolls for the Mana Crypt, but doesn't lose any life. Loudmouth Heffa is saying unite against Ellie, she's a problem. Uh, no, no. Uh, how many cards are in everybody's hand? Three. Two? Three. Alright. You said you would give it to me. You have any cards? I have three. She has two. Yeah, but we have to unite against <laughs> I her. I gave it back Look, to you though. She's got the best thing on the but top. What she have on top? That's Coot Coot Swarm. Or we don't want to deal with that. Oh fuck. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> <want to> <laughs> <Scoot> <laughs> Swarm. <laughs> Why are you not giving it to me? So you're gonna give it to the combo player? Oh, I might try to kill him. How much commander damage you at? Twelve? I'm at Twelve. Can you do nine commander damage to him? I'm at four. I could most likely do it. Cool. Well, first, I'm going to return the dust. This and this. He then casts Golem Skin Gauntlets and equips it to Rograk, giving it 8 power. <laughs> Hit her, and I'll help you out. <laughs> the last time that happened, I died. <laughs> Hit her, and I'll help you out. I don't know. I'm going to stick to my gut. Our take nine. You're never allowed it back. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph then gets his defector back and draws and discards because of the boots. You uh, need to read chat more. Take Albert's offer, see? Joseph then casts a Lantern of Revealing, but for some reason, Ellie decides to counter it with Dovin's Veto. Ellie now starts her turn and uses two of the colorless mana to help pay for her Scoot Swarm, which triggers her true lane to draw a card, but does not have a land to play. Simic Ghost Chamber, Tatiova? All right, Sam, if we lose Draw. because of me, then I'll say I'm sorry. I do not have a land to play. She then uses another colorless and a green to cast Lotus Cobra, drawing a card and finding a Fabled Passage, which she plays with Tulane. That is going to trigger a few things. That's going to trigger Tati over, so I'm going to gain not a life yet. and I'm going to draw a card. So, okay. so boom. Uh, I also get a Scoot Swarm because I played a land. Any Scoot Swarms that come into play right now are going to have summoning sickness. I'm going to play another land for turn. I'm going to play a Reliquary Tower. Mm -hmm. Tea over activates. I get to gain a life. I get to draw a card. Scoot Swarm activates. This is now four. I gain another mana. I'm going to make it another green mana. So I have two green mana. The Fabled Passage. Um, I'm going to play. A, I'm going to get planes. Tati over. I gain a life. Uh, Albert, would you switch the four to an eight, please, for my Scoot Swarm? And now she's using me as. Thank you. <laughs> as, her, as her Scoot Swarm slave. <laughs> Tatiova, I'm going to draw the card for Tatiova. Do you use two? So I'm just... I do have God damn it. Uh -huh. <laughs> damn it, Albert. Wayward Swordtooth. Uh, trigger. I get to like draw a card. And Misty Rainforest, which is going to uh, trigger, trigger. So this is going to be 16 and trigger. So that's going to be another green mana. Uh, I gain a life. I draw a card. Um, let's see. I'm going to use that last mana drain mana. Thank you for that, by the way. And I will use this planes, and I'm going to cast Joanna. That is going to trigger two lane, so I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to play the Canopy Vista, which I do. So trigger Tatiova, trigger uh, Lotus, trigger Scoot. I'm going to pay one and crack the Misty Rain Forest. I'll grab a Savannah, draw off Tatiova, and then this also goes up to a four. Okay. Uh, Bleeding Pool is going to come in. I'm not going to shock it in, but I'm going to gain a life. Um, actually, you know, uh, yeah, might as well shock it in because I'm only going to lose one, not two. Um, but uh, trigger, trigger, trigger. That's going to be five. That's going to be 128. 28. Draw a card. I can look at the top of my library at any time. I can still play lands from the top of my library because I have three extra lands that I can still play. So does, play that. Does anyone have a Rakdos charm? Um, gain a life. Draw a card. Don't, don't Boom. This doubles again. 
check the time in the library. I'm trying to also play this properly so I'm not making mistakes. Um, floating, because I'm gonna play one with the multiverse. Get to kill her. <laughs> so, for the top of my library, so Vala is Stampede. Um, so, you can discuss if you want, or you can just choose off your own volition. I just them from your All right, so freeze. the first permanent I'm gonna play is Odawara. So I'll do the triggers in a moment. Uh, the second one I'm gonna play is a Shy Soul of the Wild, which I will do the triggers in a moment. And the third one I'm gonna play is Jahira, Friend of the Forest. So first trigger is gonna be Tatiova, I'm gonna gain a life. Scoot Swarm is gonna double. This is gonna go up, I'm gonna draw a card. Second trigger is gonna be Tulane, I'm going to draw a card. I'm gonna play a land. And then uh, the other two lane trigger off of this, draw a card, play a land. Thanks, Wizards. <laughs> I get to draw two cards off Tatiova. Um, I'm going to tap Gaia's Cradle right here. Two. <laughs> no, yeah, don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I have a fuck ton of green mana. Uh, so I'm gonna use four of that plus two blue, if I can find my blues. And I'm gonna cast Maddie Cacophony for its kicker. Can I just concede? At any time, I can cast stuff from the top of it. So I'm going to mana again. I'm gonna play a Solving. Use two of those green mana, cast a Nature's Lore. <clears throat> Put it on the battlefield. This is gonna come in tapped. It's as far as headquarters. I'm gonna gain a life. I'm gonna draw a card. And now I win the game. I'm gonna use three of the, the infinite mana, two blues, and I'm gonna cast a Time Warp. So if you guys can't stop the time warp, I went on my turn because I just attacked with a fuck ton of scoops. Oh, I'm saying no. you guys. Oh, Julian wins! <laughs> That's what I was getting to. Okay. A little fuck ton. <laughs> a little fuck ton. <laughs> All right, Julian. Well, congratulations, Ellie, on securing your first win on the channel. This is a perfect example of what happens if you allow Chulane to go unchecked. Once it gets the value engine going, you're usually too far behind to stop it. That and some very questionable threat assessment really secured Ellie the win this time. Uh, I don't even know where to start. First I left it up to chat to decide whether I keep my hand, which was two mana rocks and five lands. And then I just peeled land after land off the top. So I was dead in the water from the beginning. But still, I did what I could with what I could. Joseph on the other hand, drew through half of his library, but just kept going after me. If he would have maybe started pointing some damage at Ellie, she wouldn't have had such an easy time winning. So I blame him primarily for the outcome of this episode. Daniel also gets a lot of the blame. The threat of me comboing off with one of my essential pieces already exiled still kept him from helping me try to deal with Ellie's board. But had no problem paying 9 life to essentially gift her 9 mana. So if you made it this far, make sure to point all angry comments at those two. If you enjoyed this game, consider stopping by our Twitch streams for Salty Tier Tuesdays every Tuesday at 6pm Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 7 Pacific Standard Time for live commander action. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment, and if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Before we go, we'd like to give a big thank you to our amazing patrons. We are glad to have your support and thankful for each and every one of you. We here at In Response would like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you follow us on our social medias. We also stream every Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.